Hello, a good Erev Shabbos on this beautiful Friday. Special Shabbos. We read a double portion of Chukas and Balak the Shabbos in Shul. And in Chukas, there's a very interesting thing that we read about. And it's the story of the snake. There was a pandemic amongst the Jewish people where there was a venomous snake that was poisoning people and they were dying. And Moses turns to God and cries out to God, help us, help us. And what does God tell him? God tells him to make a copper snake. Something, a snake formed out of copper that looks identical to the snake that was venomous and killed him. And to put it on a pole high up. And he says, when the Jewish people will look up at the pole, at the snake, they will be healed. And that's what happened. But this is something so bizarre. What's going on here? First of all, what's the point of forming a snake out of copper? If they're looking up to God, to heaven, to be healed, why the point of a copper snake? Secondly, isn't the snake the venomous poison that they got? So why use that to heal them if that's what hurt them? In fact, the Gemara asked the same question. The Talmud says, I don't understand. Why are they looking up at the pole of the snake? And you know what the Gemara says? The Talmud says that really they only looked upwards, but they had to pray to God. If they prayed to the snake, they wouldn't be healed. If that's the case, why confuse them? Why have the snake? And not only that, but we do know that this copper snake, which many believe was the root for the emblem of the medical field, which is a snake, a caduceus, which many people believe comes from this. Every doctor wishes that their medicine should heal just like this copper snake. But they kept it for generations to remember this miracle. And then, in the time of Ezekiel, King Ezekiel in the 6th century BCE, the Jews got lost and they started worshipping the snake. And it had to be destroyed because they thought the snake was the healer. But if that's the case, why to begin with? confuse the Jewish people and tell them to make this copper snake that was the one that poisoned them and then to pray upwards to God. Just pray to God. 1927. It was a June night. Three years after Stalin, the ruthless Stalin, took over from Lenin. In 1924 he took over and we all know that Stalin killed more people than Hitler. He killed 15 million people of his own people. And the worst that suffered were the Jewish people and the Jewish religion. He eradicated generations of knowledge and study and tradition from the Jewish people. And everyone was scared of the ruthless Stalin. He set up camps and he killed people. There was no questions asked. But there was one fearless leader who stood up to Stalin. And that was the Lubavitcher Rebbe, blessed memory, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he built yeshivas and mikvahs, underground mikvahs. And he had some yeshivas only stayed open for a few weeks. As you probably remember, I told you that my grandfather was a dean of one of these yeshivas and ended up in prison too. And they tried to uplift the spirit of all the Jews still living there. And they called the Miyada Dad Mura, the army of the Rebbe. But it all came to a crashing end in 1927. When on a ruthless night in the middle of June, the previous Rebbe was pulled out of his bed and sent to prison. He was sentenced to death. There was no courts. There was nothing. You were sentenced and that's what happened. But miraculously, only a few days after, he was, his death sentence was commuted to 10 years of exile or 13 years of exile. Now let me tell you, the exile in Russia made Rikers Island look like a prison, like a palace. It was horrendous. And most people never came out of these places. 10, 13 years, your family never heard about you again. You died. And then on the 12th of Tammuz, which is tomorrow, miraculously, the previous Rebbe was led out of prison. He was exiled out of Russia, but he was led out of prison where he made a pact with his students, with the, with the Hasidim again, that although he was leaving, they would never give up on staying in Russia and providing Jewish services to the Jews. And that's what they did. And the previous Rebbe, in one of his talks, it's written in Hebrew, but it's translated in English, called a prince in prison, writes about his experience in Shpalerke. Shpalerke was the prison, the most notorious prison in Russia. 
and how there was no windows. It was pitch dark. He didn't know day or night. The only way you knew if it was day or night was when the guards would wake you up at about 6.30 or 7 and then give you bread and they would put you to bed at 10.30 at night. And the previous, the, the previous Rebbe finishes his diary by saying that it reminded him what the Talmud says that when Moses came up to, heav- to heaven to get the Torah from God, he didn't know when it was day or night. The only way he knew was when he heard the angels saying the praise, Kadosh, 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 which we say in services every day, he knew it was morning. And when he heard them say, Baruch Kavod Hashem Im Komo, he knew it was night. Think about the previous Rebbe in Shpalerke, Russia, with a death sentence hanging over him. And what does it remind him of? It reminds him of the angels and Moses knowing day and night when he went up to heaven. In 1962, at a Fabringen, at a gathering, that this Shabbos, which is the 12th of Tammuz, and we celebrate 96 years since the liberation of the previous Rebbe from Shpalerke and from a death sentence, the Rebbe spoke about this. And he connected it to the Torah report and to the story of the snake. And the Rebbe said like this. The Rebbe said the message of the Torah and God was telling Moses was something so powerful. There's two ways to deal with pain. One is to look right or left, to cave into it, or to commiserate and to be sad. But what the Torah is telling you is that within the greatest challenge, you could find hope and you could find renewal. That the way for healing is to look at the snake. And when you look at the snake, the one that bit you, within that challenge, but you look at it the way it is on a pole up in heaven. You look upwards to God. There's two snakes. There's a snake the way it is here. It's a venomous poison. It sits and it bites you and it kills you. But then there's the snake of heaven when you see something from the vantage point of God, of spirituality, of holiness. And no matter the situation, no matter the direness, no matter the sadness, there's reason for hope. There's reason for renewal. Within every crack is the opportunity to find light Within every challenge is the opportunity to grow. And that was the message of God telling Moses, you know how you overcome the snake? You know how you overcome every single challenge, every single struggle? You look it in the face, but you look at it upwards towards heaven and you find the strength of God to find something that will let you rebuild. That's been the story of the Jewish people for generations. We've always looked upwards towards God. And in every crack, in every challenge, in every struggle, we never let ourselves be victims. We knew that if we don't stand up, if we don't find blessing, if we don't find hope, within that crisis, no one else will. And that's what we did. Just look about in the last generation, after the Holocaust, how the Jewish people rebuild, and we have the state of Israel, and how we stood up and didn't become victims, but looked that devil in the eyes and said never again and by never again we didn't just mean never again we won't let you do it but we put boots on the ground and we build an army and we build the most modern country unheralded never possible before that in 75 years look how many countries are poverty stricken are living a thousand years ago and here we build a country in 75 years the most high tech with the best armies Because we realize that from every struggle, we need to find something to lift us up. And that was a story of the previous. He was in prison in 1927. He didn't see the prison, the dark walls, the warden waking him up at 6.30. He saw Moses saying Kadosh Kadosh and praising God and getting the Torah. And that's how he was able to overcome it. One of the people who interrogated the previous Rebbe when he was brought into prison was part of the Yevisiekta. The Yevisiekta was the Russian Jew, unfortunately, who sided with Stalin and stood against their Jewish brethren. And one of them was Lula. And he was interrogating the previous Rebbe and the previous Rebbe didn't want to speak. He wanted to hear something they didn't want to tell him. And he pointed his gun at him and he said, that if you don't respond, the gun will find you. And the previous Rebbe looked at him and he said, people are afraid of guns only if they have one world and many gods. But the Jewish people who have one God and many worlds are not afraid of the gun. That was a story of heroism of the previous Rebbe. That's what we celebrate tomorrow. Today you see Putin and you see Russia and all that's going on. 
But yet you see that the Jews who came to America, the Russian Jews, and I know so many of them within our community are the proudest Jews, are the ones that embrace their religion and their Judaism and Israel unbashfully in the proudest way. Because deep down, what was eradicated from them never left them. And thank you to the previous Rebbe and these heroic people who never gave up on the Jews in Russia. May Hashem give each and every one of us that whenever we should never have crises, but when we have a venomous snake that bites us, we should look up at it from the vantage point of heaven and find the strength. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom.